Hello, 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 everyone. Happy New Year, everyone, and hello. Um, welcome to Moments of Hope with Ewa. My name is Ewa Deli, and it is my greatest pleasure to welcome everyone to Moments of Hope in the year 2022. You made it. I made it. Welcome. Congratulations. Um, and I am so looking forward to what we will be doing this year. Now, just before I start off, I would like to express, you know, my deepest thanks, my deepest appreciation to everyone who are, has in different ways supported this program, Moments of Hope. Um, thank you for joining the platforms, the different programs, and the ones we had last year throughout. I just want to appreciate you for your participation, for the engagements, you know, for the likes, the sharing, subscribing to um, the different platforms, to our YouTube channel. I am really grateful. I really, really appreciate you. And even for this edition, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Divine Favor. If you're there listening to me, just type in where you're um, watching us from, where you where you're currently are at, at the moment. Thank you so, so much. Um, I know a lot of us have shared the flyer with our friends. We have shared you know, this program on our social media platforms. I want to say thank you again. And um, thank you for coming on this particular edition now to anyone who will be watching after now i am so delighted to have you here it's a good time to share with you know share the broadcast share with your friends invite people to come and listen this is one that affects almost everybody why do i say that um because the topic is um is breast screenings and it's mammograms so even if you're not at that stage you would have someone, you will have a woman in your life, you have a mommy, you have a wife, you have a sister. And it's even extending to the men because they have breasts as well. Okay. So I am really delighted to have everyone. And also, you know, I feel privileged to be able to have this discourse that we'll be having today. I'll just quickly share with us what we do on Moments of Hope. On Moments of Hope, it's a talk show. It's an initiative from Arise from the Ashes, which is a charity. We focus and aim to inform, educate, create awareness on cancer, support cancer patients by meeting their physical, their mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. And one of the ways we, we do this, all of what I've talked about, is by having conversations like we're doing today. And so, like I said, for this month's edition, January, as we start the new year, we'll be looking at breast screenings and mammograms. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone from Milton Keynes. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, like I said, uh, we, I am really looking forward to today's edition. I believe someone is going to receive insight, wisdom, and direction they need for this year, 2022. And to help us in our conversations today or discussing with me, I have a special guest. And it is my pleasure to bring her on now. Um, my special guest today, hello, is a radiographer and she's a UK qualified mammographer. She currently works with the National Health Service in England, which we call the NHS. Um, she's the founder of Kind Heart charity foundation and um, the aim to educate inform and support african women and underprivileged children she's a philanthropist she's a speaker she has organized and attended several webinars trainings workshops promoting breast cancer awareness and providing mammogram platforms for women who are unable to afford you know a mammogram and she supports breast cancer survivors. And it is my pleasure to welcome you, Mrs. Uzo Amaka Mkonta. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much. And it's a great, great, great pleasure to have you on Moments of Hope today. Thank you for accepting to be a guest on the show. Um, I know how busy your schedule is. 
Uh, you know how long I've sent you messages. <laughs> and so you being here today is deeply, deeply appreciated. I am really looking forward to what you'll be sharing with us on breast screenings and, and mammograms. And, um, you know, from what I read, you can see that we do, we have very similar passions in this particular area. Right. So without further ado, I'm going to yield um, the floor to you. And I'm going to ask, okay, Mrs. Uzo Amaka, um, if you could just tell us about a bit about yourself and then before you go on to sharing with us about breast screenings and, and mammograms. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my lovely, lovely sister. Um, it's a privilege for me to be here today, I must say, and also to discuss a very uh, important topic such as this breast screening and mammography. I count it as a big privilege to be here today. So in this particular subject, I must say, I'm sure many of my colleagues and fellow professionals are watching as well. I do not claim in any way to be the best in this or to know it all. Um, I'm sure I have people who know much, much more than myself who will be joining us today. So I would say it's going to be more interactive. We share our knowledge and information in ways that it can help us to save human lives. That is all we want to do. So I want to say a very big well, uh, thank you to you, Ewa, um, for inviting me on this platform today. Um, yes, so we'll be talking about breast screening. I am a mammographer by profession. I'm a UK qualified mammographer and I've been practicing here in the United Kingdom for the past three years. So this will be my fourth year. Uh, but I've been a radiographer for over 16 years. Yeah. Um, so it is my privilege to share my insights on screening, breast screening and mammography, especially um, as it concerns uh, women and black women too, um, how it concerns us and how it affects us and how important I think it is that we all uh, comply to uh, coming for our, going for our appointments, checking our breasts, and all whatnot. So I look forward to a very lovely and interactive session today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for for that um, introduction. Yeah, we we really looking forward to it being interactive. Um, and then I'm looking forward to um, the question time as well. So um before i hand over back to um uzo i would ask that as as she speaks you know as she shares with us on on the topic breast screenings and mammograms um please feel free to put in your comments on whatever platform that you are you're watching us from uh, from youtube from facebook we'll pick up those questions or the comments and then um there'll be time there'll be session for us to address all of that Right, so thank you so much, and over to you. Thank you. Okay. So breast screening, we describe breast screening as women coming in for checking of their breasts. So screening of the breast is done for only well women. I'll do my very best to be as simple as possible. So we are talking to everyone and everyone is able to understand me. And please, in case you don't understand or you have any questions or you think I'm moving too fast, please let me know, okay? Yes, thank you so much. So I would say breast screening is the screening we do for women that are well. So I try, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to distinguish or differentiate between breast screening and going to the hospital because you have found something in your breast, okay? So breast screening is the screening done on well women, women who haven't got any problems with their breasts, they haven't got any issues in their breasts, but then they are called on. I'll take an example in the United Kingdom. We have the breast screening program that is being organized by the National Health Scheme Program. 
to get women who are between ages of four, 50 and 70. So we call them every three years to come in and we use mammograms to check their breasts. So if you are between the ages of 50 and 70, you have an automatic invite through your GP. And when you are called in, we expect you to, what we practice these days, um, shortly after COVID, we've been having this open access system. And this system enables you to um, ring us up. We send you an invite, you get the invite, and then you ring us up to choose a time most convenient for you. And this is done in a way to encourage every woman within the age of the breast screening exercise to participate in that program. <clears throat> So breast screening, one thing it does for you, <coughs> sorry about that. Breast screening, anytime we call it, the women in for breast screening, they will be having a mammogram done. And what is a mammogram? Mammogram is the examination of the breast using x-rays. Many women we have noticed, many, many women when they are asked, okay, I've been invited for a mammogram, and they're like, oh no, I don't want to go, it's so painful. <laughs> Sorry about that. There are so many um, ex um, reasons and myths surrounding mammography and breast screening and why women don't want to attend. But one thing that is very, very pertinent that I must say to you today is that breast screening has been found to have more than 40% efficacy. It has been able to reduce mortality rates in breast cancer by 40%, this is statistics. So if you are able to go for your breast screening exercise, you are already reducing your chances of dying of breast cancer. So today we want to establish some basic facts. I want to make sure that you understand what breast screening really means. I want you to understand why you need to go for your screening. I want you to understand that mammograms and mammography so many things that you have heard about them are not true. They are myths. Okay. So before I go ahead, I want to quickly um, <coughs> lay some background <coughs> to breast screening. Breast screening is different in different countries. The program is different for different countries. In the United States, breast screening is done by annually. That is every other year, two yearly. In some other countries, like in the Sub-Saharan Africa, we don't even have it at all. In the United Kingdom, like I said, we have it every three years. So in places, but we also have what we call the high-risk um, screening, okay? There are people who are high-risk. The high-risk ladies are being invited to come in every year for breast screening. That is for their mammograms. It used to be that breast screening is described in, in three categories. It used to be that it is said that um, the clinical breast examination, the CBE, is a form of breast screening. The se breast self-examination, the BSC, is a form of breast screening. And then the mammography is another form of breast screening. But recent works and researches has shown that Recent works have shown that um, clinical breast examination and breast self-examination do not necessarily reduce mortality rate. Having said this, I must point out that there have also been some works done, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, where it has been determined that due to the inadequacy of uh, the the medical facilities. We don't have the manpower, we haven't got the equipment. Because of that, we ha it has been officially adopted that breast, clinical breast examination can now be used as a form of breast screening. So I want to point it out. So when you hear breast, clinical breast examination, you also know that it's another form of breast screening. Usually that is not called breast screening in developed worlds. But in sub-Saharan Africa, 
some researches have been done and they have adopted it that clinical breast examination can be used as a form of breast screen. Now, ask me, what is clinical breast examination? So clinical breast examination is just the examination of the breast by a trained professional. So, but many times back in, in like I said, in sub-Saharan African countries, you find out that also due to lack of professional, uh, medical professionals, other non-medical professionals are now being trained to do clinical breast examination. This is all geared towards helping to detect breast cancer as early as possible. Now, breast self-examination is also the same thing concerning uh, the sub-Saharan Africa. In those countries, you are also training women, ladies, young women, older ones, on how to check their own breasts by themselves. Now, this has been found to be very, very useful, okay? Now, in United Kingdom, we say, do your, come for your breast screening by mammography, using mammography, but do not forget to keep being breast aware. So when we say being breast aware, what we mean is, you know, um, you are aware of your breast, you do your self breast examination, not minding that it is, you've just finished your mammogram. So for example, you are invited for mammogram today. You're supposed to come in for your mammogram, your breast screening, and you go in for breast screening. We advise you, the mammographers, the people that you meet, we advise you to, although you've done your mammograms today, please, being breast aware. This is to say, don't say after I've done mammogram uh, yesterday, so I should relax. There's nothing wrong with my breast. The result has come back after two weeks and there's nothing wrong with my breast, so I can go and sleep. So we are saying no. Even though you've done your mammogram yesterday, continue to check your breast by yourself. It has been, it has been already, it has been not, noted that more than 40% of the women find their breast cancers by themselves. Now that is quite impressive and this is quite encouraging. So in between what we call the in interval cancers can come up between mammograms. So we advise women to continue to be self breast aware. Okay. Um, like I said, I would like this to be very, very um, interactive. If there are questions that are coming up or a particular section of this um, this lovely speaking that we are doing today, this program we are doing today, if there is any specific thing that would look, like us to talk about, I'm very happy to answer such questions. I think it might make it a bit more engaging if there are questions that you would want me to answer pertaining to breast screening. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Uzo. Thank you for that. For I, I like I like the way that um, you've sort of, you know, sort of broken down, you know, breast screening um, and, and mammography or mammograms. You know, most of the time we use them, you know, intermittently and just breaking them down to say that, you know, in the United Kingdom, um, women are invited for breast screenings from the age of 50 to 70 years, and it's by mammography. But then in between or before, because it has 50, and, and these days we see a lot of women who, you know, got the, um, saw the lump even before they were 50. Okay, so I'm gonna to come to that. They saw the lumps before um, they were 50. So, you know, I'm just saying that, and, and then we need to continue to be breast aware. So even after doing the examinations or the screenings or the mammograms, we still need to check our breast. Okay. So two questions I'm going to ask. What do you mean by being breast aware? Okay. 
what do you mean by breast aware? What what are we supposed to do? Am I just to, to am I supposed to be looking at my breast or whatever? So that's one. And then why why is it that um, we have breast screenings? And I'm using where we are at right now, from the age of fifty. You know, knowing fully well that a lot of people have seen lumps or have had cancers, breast cancers, before the age of fifty. So that's a two-in-one question. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, this is better. I like it. This is really nice. So first of all. Breast screening starts at age 50 after the national health here in the United Kingdom. After they have done series of trials and they are able to come to a point that it is best that breast screening starts at age 50 for women who do not have any uh, risk or moderately re at risk women. So when we say at risk, okay. When we say at risk, we mean women who has breast cancer in their family history. So maybe their mom had breast cancer or their, their auntie had breast cancer or their sister had breast cancer and they were referred to the family history clinic. So from there, they are categorized as high risk. These are women who are, it's possible that they're going to come down with breast cancer at any time. Why? Because there is breast cancer in their family history. Mm -hmm. Usually here, they are taken for genetic testing and it's found out that truly they have, it's called BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. And when those genes are found in those women, you know that invariably at some point in their lives, they will come down with breast cancer. So those women are now asked to do breast screening. You started theirs from age 40. Okay. There are reasons why the the program is started at 50. Different reasons. First of all, at age 50, the okay. breast, the makeup of the breast, I'm trying to be as simple as possible. So the breast makeup or the breast tissue is less dense. What I mean by less dense is more fatty. So it's not like the young, you know, when you see a young girl who who's a young girl's breast is more glandular, we call it. So the word glandular means like it's more dense. So it's more difficult. If you do a mammogram on a late on a child on a girl who is 25, and you do a mammogram on a woman who is 50, mammogram, the sensitivity and the specificity of mammography can only be more than 80% accurate from women who are older than 40. Mm. Okay. I don't know if I made sense. Yes, it so does make sense. So, yes. so it means that when the women, as the women are growing older, mm. their breast tissue is more sensitive to mammography, to x ray. Mm. So, um, so it makes it easier for the radiologists or the film readers to interpret mm. the breast image. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. So, but if the women we are younger, their breasts are so dense that when you take a mammogram of it, the tissues resemble each other. So the the sensitivity of of mammography is reduced mm. for women who are younger. Also, okay. that yes. Also, statistics have shown that breast cancer incidence increases with age. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is what um, these are some of the reasons why I um, the N the NHS has uh, agreed to do breast screening from between the ages of fifty to seventy. Remember, we say fifty to seventy, but even when you get to seventy, we stop sending you officially invites, but we still tell you that if you are happy to continue with the screening, feel free to ring us up after three years that you have had a mammogram. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You understand? So yeah. we ask you, if, but the ladies who are younger than 40, unfortunately for black women, statistics has shown again that black women stand a higher risk of developing breast cancer at younger age, twice as likely 
as our Caucasian counterparts. Twice as likely as our Caucasian counterparts. And this that means if our Caucasian counterparts have um, an incident rate of 20% of having breast cancer at a younger age, for a black woman, it increases, it becomes 40%. And so it's, it's even more serious that we talk about breast cancer in younger women. So the advice still now is still that the women, the younger women, when we say being breast that we're answering your number two question, is that you keep checking your breast. So we advise you that you check your breast on a monthly basis, preferably five to seven days after your period for the pre-monopausal women, that's the younger women. Check your breasts, do a self breast exam, breast self-examination, five to seven days after your period. How do you do a breast self-examination? I will tell you. So I always say breast self-examination does not have a particular method. So don't bother yourself trying to find which one is the best way to do it. The important thing about doing a breast self-examination is to make sure that your the whole breast is covered. Well, I can give you some um, tips on how to do it because some people still say, "Please tell us how can we do breast examination." Is that okay, Sister Iwa? Oh, yes, that's definitely fine. Go ahead, and that's okay. what we're here. <laughs> okay, okay. So for a breast self examination, I love to say, you stand on stand facing your mirror. Okay, don't prepare for it specially. There is no prepare, special preparation. Remember that it's going to be five to six, seven days after your period. You can put this down on your diary. You can make some of your friends and have what we call breast, breast checking bodies. You can make friends who you with them can say, have you checked, hey babe, have you checked your breast? Have you checked them this month? Or you can put it down on your diary or on your phone using um, it's still diary an alarm to 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 remind you to check your breast. Okay, so on that day, I would say first of all, undress from your waist up, stand in front of the mirror, and do what we call first of all, you do what we call looking. Remember, the main reason why we say do breast self examination. Is that we want you to know your normal. Mm. Mm -hmm. So unless you know what your normal breast looks like, when something becomes abnormal, mm. you may not notice. Mm. So we want to establish that you know your breast. Know what your breast looks like. Okay? So that's the reason for breast self-examination. So that when there is anything not as you have always known it, you can quickly um, um, report to your doctor. So, um, the breast self examination, uh, undress from your waist up, stand in front of your mirror, preferably, I will say, when you're taking your bath. Why I say this is because most times when you have the soapy, when you've taken your bath and you have soap all over your body, your body is more slippery. When your body is slippery, it kind of makes it easier for you to feel something with your mind's eye. Okay? So I would say you use, first of all, your two hands down by your side. Look at the mirror. Look at your breasts, your two breasts. Are they looking like you saw them the last month? Are they the same size? Are there any pore cream? Are there any lumps or bumps? Remember, we do it five to seven days after period because it has been noticed that during your period, the hormones in the woman's system makes your breast to be a bit bumpy sometimes. You just notice that your breast is not like it used to be because you are within your period. And at that time, you will feel pain. Some women feel different things during their period. So what we are saying is this time, allow it, always allow it five to seven days after the period. Okay, stand in front of the mirror, like I said, look at your breast. Are you seeing some signs, 
some of the signs to look out for are pokery. When I say pokery, you see an orange. You see the body of an orange. You know mm. how it looks. Mm. So those are pokerings, okay? So you are looking out for, is there any area of your breast that has such a thing? Okay, there is none. Fine. Is there any lump? Are you seeing a visible lump? Some lumps are visible. Mm. Okay? Are you seeing a visible lump? Okay, no visible lump. Is your nipple looking okay? Or is it drawn in? Is this how your nipple used to be? So I've I've mentioned like four things to look out for, right? So you're looking for a lump, pulpering, nipple being drawn in. Okay, you are looking for rash. Is there a rash in any part of the breast that wasn't there? Okay, you are looking for thickening. You know what we call thickening? Thickening is like you already used to your breast being very soft and uh, tender. But when there is a part of the breast that, that is now strong, mm. I'm trying to make sure I explain this the way we understand it. So a part of the breast, instead of being the normal, your normal whole breast is soft, but a particular part is now stronger than the other part. Now that is, many times when it's stronger like that, looking at it, you can notice that something is wrong with this part of my breast. So that's what you do by looking. When you have looked at your breast, then you have your hand. Use your right hand, place it up behind your head, and use the right, the opposite hand to check the opposite breast. Does that make sense? I'm doing it so that if you're at home, you are feel free to join me to check your own breast at this time. Okay? You don't need to remove every, anything. Just do as I say. Follow me. Let's do it. Okay? So have your hand up. Okay? Everyone, I hope we are, we are joining me. So when you have your hand up, you use the opposite hand. You know the spokes of a bicycle. You know how the spokes of a bicycle goes. So it goes from here to here and everything comes to the center, right? That's the spokes of a bicycle. The same way, have the spokes of a bicycle in your head, the picture of it. So as you do this, start from here. Remember that your axilla is part of, has a good portion of your breast tissue. So the breast tissue actually starts from here. It's extending to the axilla. And that is part of the reasons why we say start from the axilla to check your breast. Okay? So when you start from here, you check it, press it, go down like the spoke of a bicycle to your nipple. Okay? Divide in your mind's eye, divide your breast into four quadrants. In each of the quadrants, check like a post, uh, spokes of a bicycle to the nipple. Check again the other quadrants, check again to the nipple, the under, go again to the nipple, go all round. Each time you are ending where? At the nipple. Each time you're ending at the nipple, like the spoke of a bicycle. Now, when you have ended at the nipple, give your nipple a gentle squeeze. We ask you to do this because any liquid, any discharge from the breast that is not milk, needs to be checked out mm. so you, it could be bloody it could be something smelly foul smelling so anytime you see something like that blood foul smelling liquid coming from your nipples you need to check with your doctor remember it is not everything that you find about your breast that is really a problem many a very high percentage of the things you find out in your breast could be benign when we say benign, we mean it could be nothing to worry about or to lose sleep over. But it is better to find out mm. what is what or which is what. Okay? So, after you've done that, you've given it a gentle squeeze at the nipple. If there is nothing coming at the nipple, then you are okay. Now you have taken month one. This is January 2022. It's good that we are doing this program this month. So you can start now mm. and do it. So you know you've done for January. Go to your calendar and ticket. Breast checked. Okay? You know you've checked it for month one. 
Then, the same thing you did here, remember to do it here. Okay? Do the same thing. You place the other arm and use, use the other hand as well. These things will not take you more than five minutes. It will take up to five minutes as you do it in your shower. Okay? Now, after you've done it, I also advise women, after you've looked and you've pressed, it's also good that you drop, you know, your, your shoulders. You can just drop your arm so that your breast drop in front of you. That can also help you to look again and see if there is a problem with your breast. Remember, you are checking to know your breast. So when it drops and you look, you, you know, I hey, this one is my own. Oh, no, that's exactly how it looks. So when you see it in February, you still know that it, it still belongs to me. It's not another person's own. Because the moment it looks like someone else's own, you need to run to your doctor. This is the point we are trying to make, okay? So um, that is that. And remember, when you're checking your breast, to check inside your axilla, I mean your armpits, okay? Now, inside the armpits also, press a bit deeply. Many times, anything that is painful, which we generally, many things that are painful may not be cancer. Most cancers are not painful. They are painless. Okay? And that is why we do not worry so much about pain. Nevertheless, if the pain is consistent, please check with your doctor. Do not take it for granted. And please um, do not misquote me at all. Check with your doctor if the pain is consistent. So when you are checking your armpits, you'll be checking for lymph nodes, okay? Lymph nodes are normal, normal um, rubbery kind of structures that are in there. They are usually there. They are not looking for any trouble. They don't have any problem. But there are times that the lymph nodes get enlarged. When they get enlarged, you will feel them. They become bigger and more rounded, okay? And if they are more rounded, and then sometimes they are tender, tender, when I say tender, I mean painful, then you know that there is need for you to check with your doctor. Anytime the armpits are not feeling again like your normal, please check with your GP. If you are in the United Kingdom, if you are in Nigeria, check with your doctor or anywhere. Check with your doctor. So this is what we mean when I say be breast stars. Wow. Thank you so, so much, Uzo, for that. That's really, really breaking it down and a lot of information. I hope um, for everyone that is watching, I hope you're making notes. I hope you, um, you know, you got engaged and also involved in the practical self-breast examination. I mean, it's it's a practical thing. And I really like the way you, you went about it, um, Uzo. So it's, we're, just, we're not just doing theory. It's practical. It's something that we need to do regularly. And um, and also to say, you know your breast. This one is my own. This is how it looks like. You know, I don't want us to, I think it's important that I make it, I just put it out there that this is not to scare anyone, okay? It's not to put fear in you or anything. It's just like she said, to know your breast. Now, um, Permit me to say that, and I and I know that Uzo would also, you know, agree with me on this. Is it? There's been an increase, you know, on breast cancer. Like she said, that um, the the black, you know, African woman has breast cancer twice as our, you know, Caucasian counterparts. I don't know if we know the the reason why. Um, I was going to ask Uzo why, but I have also been reading that we really don't know what the reasons are, which means that there is a risk out there. We, there is a risk out there. And so we need to put up a defense. We need to have a strategy, a strategy against this risk, whatever it is, and become aware. Let's not play ignorance. Let's not, you know, think, oh, it's out there. No. Just you just take care of yourself. Do you understand? You take care of yourself, you look after your breasts. Thank you so much. And um, um, Uzo, you talked about so sort of three three categories of people that I picked up from what you said. So if there's been a history of breast cancer, um, it's good to go for genetic testing. 
we're not saying that it's going to come back to you, but there's the risk is there. Go for genetic genetic testing, and that's what she called, you know, the high risk. You're right, there's high risk because it's been in the family, and um, like we talked about, you know, being breast aware. So whether you're um, if you're not if you don't fall into the category of the high risk, you're not 50 yet. Get familiar with your breast and do your um, breast examination. And then if you're within the group of 50 to 70 and you're United Kingdom, you will get invited for the mammograms. Please go for the mammograms. Please go for them. Um, I was just I'm just going to say that, you know, in the in the in the journey of this work that we're doing, you know, breast cancer awareness, I have seen quite a few and I've heard it quite a few stories. And I hear that some ladies, right, when they get the invite, they just chuck it in the bin. Okay, so um, Uzo, I'm going to come to you. I know that you're a Christian. I know that um, you're a child of God. And um, I am also a Christian. So if you're listening and you're not a Christian, just, just flow with us. Because these are issues that are prevalent within the Black ethnic minority group, within faith groups. So if I get an invite, I am, I am a Christian, I am a person of faith. And I get an invite for mammogram or listening to this program now. What do I do? What should be my response, rather? Thank you so much, Sister Ewa. Yes, it's been a very serious matter talking about mammograms, especially in the Black community here in the United Kingdom. Have a space of programs in some outreaches and talks and seminars and encouraging black women to attend their breast cleaning exercises when they are invited. So when you are invited for breast cleaning, okay, we are all children of God. I in one of the sessions I had with a particular group organized by the I did say that breast screening, you see the mammography equipment, you see the doctors, you see the mammographers, you see the pathologists, and everyone involved in breast health. They are all a creation of God. God makes them. And it is, the, the Bible said wisdom is profitable direct okay if you will truly show that you are a child of god it is important that you also utilize what god has given to you make available to you to help save your life brain screening has been shown mammography has been shown to to avoid up to 40 percent of mortality rate in breast cancer that is a very good chance of being alive. I have had the opportunity to perform mammograms on women and women who are about 83, 80, and they'll tell me, I had breast cancer when I was 40. Okay? And I'm like, wow, really? I'll say, yes, yeah, I had breast cancer. I came in for my breast screening and it was picked up. The, the, the surgery was done. The treatment was done, and I am still here. Now we are talking about 40 years later. This is to show you that breast cancer is not a death sentence. Breast cancer statistics has shown that more than 50% of breast cancers are treatable. So a very good chance of being saved from breast cancer is you attending your breast screening mammogram examinations. So when you are invited for mammogram, please, I beg you, see it as also God's messenger to save your life. I, I don't think God will come down from heaven and save you when you have refused to save yourself. He has made these things available to you, especially when you are in the developed world like we are here in the United Kingdom. 
I mean, like Sister Ewa said, I did a, a program last time, and we had to pay for some women, my charity, by the way, I don't know if I'm talking about that, Kind Heart Charity Foundation. We are privileged by God's grace to pay for some women through some lovely, wonderful donors. To pay for them to go for Marco Brown's in Africa, in Nigeria. So we had to pay good money. And these women, we are very grateful for being given such an opportunity to scream their breasts. Now, how about you? Who is here where you are giving that on a platter? Please endeavor to come for your Marco Brown's. I can help you to debunk some things that you've heard. Breast screening is not going to make your, your susceptibility to breast cancer higher because of the x-rays. I've heard so many people say, x-ray, ah, when you have x-rays, it means you are even going to develop, you want to give me x-ray, that will make me to develop breast cancer. So I need to debunk that and say, the, the x-rays used in doing breast screening, in doing mammography, is very little dose. So the dose that you're going to get when you go for breast screening is as little as the dose you will get in from the background. When we say background radiation, we mean wherever you are now, there are some radiations coming to you. They are coming from the materials used in building your house. They are coming from the, the mobile phones you are using. And from different ways. We call them background radiation. Okay? So going for a, a breast um, screening, going for mammography, is not going to give you any high dose of x-rays. It will give you as little enough, but it can really save your life. So I want to encourage you, if you get a breast um, screening invite. Please do well to come for your breast screening. If you have questions, thank God you are listening to this today. You can ask through Sister Ewa. I am happy to answer any questions and peradventure. Like I said before, I may not have all the answers. I may not be the best. But I can assure you that with the passion and the zeal I have for lives to be saved, I am happy to go the extra mile to find your answers through the other professionals who may be more knowledgeable than myself and make sure that I give you the answer. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> so um, there's a question here. I think we might, we might just take it now. It says, at what age do you get invited for a mammogram? So uh, I want to believe that person is in United Kingdom. And um, yes, well, so at what age do you get invited for a mammogram? So for a woman, who, a well woman who is not um, at risk of breast cancer, you are invited from age 50. Okay. So in case you don't get the invite, there are some people who ring up and they say, I am already 53 and I have not been sent an invite yet. Please pick up. Google up the breast cancer center nearest to you, give them a ring, and they will invite you to come for a screening mammogram. Yes. Okay. And and for women who are high risk? And for women who are high risk, please speak to your GP. Your GP will refer you to the breast clinic where you'll be referred to the family history clinic. There you will now be enrolled into the family history clinic where you'll be having your mammograms on a yearly basis, as opposed to the women who do not have any risk, who go every three years for their mammograms. So if you are at risk, your mammogram starts at age 40. 40, okay. And not 50. So if you're at risk, if your mother had died of breast cancer, not even died, had breast cancer, your sister had breast cancer, or anyone in your family, if you are not sure of who could have it and what it means, please go to the doctor, speak to your GP, you will be referred and it will be, the family tree will be drawn for you and it will be determined whether you need the yearly screening mammograms or not. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. And for, for, um, for people who are not in the United Kingdom where we, we, you get invited by virtue of being on the uh, National Health, Health Service. So wherever you're watching from, you can apply this into you know, your own um, scenario. So if you're in Africa, for example, um, what we are saying is go for a mammogram, okay, just to check that you're well, you know, that your breast, even as you're doing your, your self-breast examination, um, go for a mammogram from the age of 50. Now, if you're high risk, if there's been the risk of breast cancer in your family, in your history, then from the age of 40, avail yourself of um, a mammogram. Now, before we finish, I'm going to uh, uh, tell, ask Uzo to tell us what she's been doing. So if you're also listening and you're in that part of the world where you you cannot afford to go for a mammogram, that's part of what her charity does, and she'll speak to us about that um, in a moment. But just before we do that, some people say that mammograms are painful, and that's why they don't want to go. Ah, I can't go for it. I don't know what you know it is the experience has been, but could you just share a bit on that? Um, if, if mammograms are painful, or what exactly makes mammograms painful? Okay, thank you so much, Sister Ewa, for that question. Um, yes, yeah, it's part of the things that I had in mind to discuss with us today. So when you come for, when you're invited for mammograms, first of all, I want you to have it at the back of your mind that you are going to save your life. That can help you to prepare your mind, okay? You are going for yourself. You are going to make your life to save your life. Now, when you come for a mammogram, some of the tips that can help you to have a stressless, seamless mammogram. I'll be sharing with you right now. Number one, once you come in for a mammogram, try not to be anxious. Like Sister Iwa said earlier on, all of this that we are saying is not to put fear in you. If we put fear in you, then we are defeating the aim. And the aim is to save your life. So do not be afraid. Anxiety causes you to be tensed. That is how the body is made, okay? So when we are anxious, our body is tensed up. And when our muscles are tensed up, we tend to feel pain more. The nerves tend to trans transmit the pain more. So you feel pain more when your body is tensed up. So I will advise you, like I tell my ladies when they come in, I advise you on your own personal, uh, personal grounds, take a deep breath and let it down. Mammograms, I don't want to deny whether they are painful or not. This is my reason. Pain can be different things to different people. So if I say it is not painful, I could be hurting someone who feels, you mean, I don't know what I'm saying. So I, I don't want to say that, okay? But I would say, because we have different pain thresholds, there are people that, that every little thing can, everything, there are people who can find mammograms painful and there are some other people who won't find it painful. But the point I want to make is that I, in order to make it less painful, that would be the better word, okay? In order to make it less uncomfortable, I personally prefer to say it's uncomfortable. It could be uncomfortable, but some people prefer to say it's painful. But in whatever is the case, in order to make the experience more seamless, try to take a deep breath and to relax. The more relaxed you are, the better your mammogram. It is better for your image. It's better for the mammographer who will be trying to put you in the correct position. And it will also be better for you who will be at rest. Okay? So the main tip I give is once you come in for your mammogram, do what? Go floppy. As this is what I tell my women. So I usually use the word go floppy. So what I'm trying to say is drop those shoulders. Okay? You know, when you come in, you're like, you know, what, what, what's going to happen now? So I'm saying that the more you are that tense, 
the more you're going to feel pain. So relax when you come for a mammogram. Relax. And in less than five minutes, you'll be out of that room. It literally takes five minutes to have a mammogram done. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for, you know, just... Uh, sort of um, clarifying that and i like the way you put it that you know pain means different things to to different people um so i, I think that also answers the question there's a question that says what happens during a screening so from what uzo has said is you're going to get your breast checked you know and of course it would involve you on dressing um and then they're trying Wait, to get oh. an, sorry so it involves you undressing from your waist up. From your waist so up. So I always advise my women, when you're going for your mammograms, try to wear um, a dress, um, let your dressing be mammogram friendly. So when I say mammogram friendly, I mean, try and put on something that will have a top. So the upper part of your clothing will be more easily removed than wearing a gown, okay? So when you wear a gown and going for a mammogram, you may be uncomfortable when you're asked to take off your dress. So I would advise anytime you are invited for a mammogram, dress mammogram friendly. Wear a top, okay, that will be easily removed and put back on after you've had your mammogram. Okay. Thank you so much. You know, your, your responses are just, you know, answering some of the questions that I have here. Is uh, There's one that says, are there tips to make the breast screening experience comfortable as possible? So you've said wear a dress, wear, wear something that is mammogram friendly. What does that mean? You're going to be, you're going to be um, looked at from your, uh, you know, from your, your, your breast is going to be to dress. Yes, your breast is going to be looked at. So it's better to wear something that you can remove from your waist up. Um, are there other things that one needs to pre do or prepare for the mammogram? Do they need to take anything along with them? You know? Okay, so yeah, one, one, I, always, I always say when you're coming, keep your letter, your invite handy. Why I say you keep it handy is because you may turn up and someone would say, are you sure you were given an appointment for today? And then you are able to present it to ascertain that you really were invited for that day and that you are not making a mistake. We've had women turn up on the 7th of February and they thought their mammogram was on that 7th, but actually what is on their invite is 17th. Mm. Okay? So I, I would advise, I would advise, from my little tiny experience when you are coming come with your letter dress mammogram friendly when i say that i mean wear something that will be easily removed from the waist up mm. not something you will struggle with okay we also say try not to wear roll on mm. why we say don't wear roll on is because we don't want the particles from the roll on to look like there is something when mm. there was nothing. Mm. So that will help us not to call you back. Because usually when you come for screening, after your mammogram has been done, if we find something in your breast that we want to check out and say, is this really there? Is there something going on? There's usually what we call a callback, a recall. Mm. So in order to avoid unnecessary recall we advise you not to wear roll-up or powder talcum powder mm. so the best thing to do take your bath that morning and just go for your mammogram do not bother wearing anything okay that's really really helpful that's really helpful so take your letter take your invite with you to the mammogram um, um appointment um wear mammogram friendly clothing and don't wear any talcum or roll-on or perspitant or deodorant i mean 
you're going for an examination you don't want any um you know sort of misrepresentations or being called back in fact that will even cause you anxiety as well when yeah. they say oh, we're not we're not sure we don't yeah. know what you have seen and you're thinking what did they see you so it's better to to just go um go as you are go as you are for those few go minutes as you are. exactly yeah, you'll be fine yeah. I, I wanted to say something sister what it just came to me now before i forget it um i had in mind to share with us that Please, when you are called to come for a mammogram and there is need for a recall, mm. okay, it's very important. You know, you just mentioned the anxiety. Mm. I always love, one of the things I try to do, I do best, one of my strengths is in communication. So I do my best to the glory of God to communicate effectively with my ladies. Mm. To explain to you that one thing you can think of each time you want to be anxious about a recall or going for a mammogram, um, some people have said it's better. Some of the reasons I've heard why people don't want to go for their mammograms, someone said to me, don't look for trouble where there is no trouble. That is your, your your breast is on its own, though. you are not sick. All of a sudden you want to, so you are the one who is going to look for breast cancer by going for breast screening. So this is also, and I do not, for any reason, undermine on the, on the such thinking. There are so many things that can contribute to someone thinking like that, okay? But I want to debunk it and say to you, it is better that you find out what is wrong with you than living in denial, mm -hmm. living in fear, mm -hmm. allowing anxiety to hold you back, and then later you regret it. Mm. Because you know the truth. It is what it is. If it is there, it is there. Mm. And if it is not, then it is not. So why don't you go find out if it is there, don't don't wait for it to get to that point where management becomes more difficult, mm. surgeries become more complicated, more funds, emotions of yourself, your family members, your loved ones, everything becomes more modeled up. Mm. In breast cancer, which today, unfortunately, is the leading cause of death in women, it has finally surpassed lung cancer, which used to be the leading cause of mortality rate, increase in mortality rate. Now, that breast cancer mortality rate, the only thing that can help you to be saved or your life to be saved or the life of your loved ones to be saved is early detection. And the whole breast screening thing that we have been talking about for the past how many minutes is simply to find the breast cancer as early as possible. Mm -hmm. So breast screening, actually what it does for you is that it finds your the breast cancer, if it is there, as early as possible. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you, in case you are feeling very anxious or you don't want to touch what's not happening or you want, you know, that feeling of leave it alone, you are going to call an illness that is not calling you. You know, some of our cultural mentality, our, you know, some of our mentalities that we need to change, you know. I want to say, please, it is better you know. It is better you find out mm -hmm. than you don't. And then it gets too late. And at that point, there's little or nothing that the medical system can do for you. Thank you. I am really, really pleased that you touched on that. And I would like us to, you know, just dwell on it a bit more. And that's why we are having this program. It's a brand new year. Um, so many of us, a lot of women, okay, but in United Kingdom specifically, you're going to be getting invites. You're going to be getting letters from NHS because this is probably your 50, you're, you're entering into um, that age, age 
um, group where you get invited for a mammogram. You get invited for breast screening via mammogram. Now, like I said earlier on, I know a, a few more people are joining us and I just want to say thank you for joining us. You're welcome. And so what I'm saying is, most of us or some of us on the platform or we know someone who we get an invite inviting you for a mammogram please attend now it's okay to say oh god forbid back to sender you know and all those things and i agree with you and i say amen but please attend just so that you can actually confirm that you're fine it's just to check with you, you know, like Uzo has said, that yes, we, we do, we're, we're encouraging self-breast examination, but there are some things that cannot be felt with the fingers or with the palms. Do you understand? So yes, do your checks, but there are some things that cannot be seen, that cannot be felt. And the screenings, the mammograms that we did, the x-ray that will pick it up. And so that's why we're encouraging everyone, please, if you know anyone, and if you're on this platform and you've been chucking away <laughs> the invites, please don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And you're not calling, you're not calling, and I'm saying that you're not calling any sickness, no. Uh -uh. Yes, I am a child of God and my default is, you know, is the Bible. Pray. In fact, you know, I'm just going to say this as it applies to, you know, that Jesus will say to when he, he would heal certain people that go and show yourself to the priest. So yes, if you're really well, let the doctors confirm it. And if there's mm -hmm. and if there's nothing, there's nothing. There's nothing to worry about. That's really so important. Thank you so much, Uzo, for that. There's somebody, I think some people have just joined us and there are a few questions. It says, how often do you get a mammogram? It's every three years, you know. For, in United Kingdom. In United Kingdom for the well woman, you know. So it's um, three years. Um, and there's a question, um, if you can help us with this, Uzo. Um, it says, I know that some COVID vaccine are causing a swelling in the underarm, so in the armpit, yeah? Is this likely to affect the result of the mammogram? So I'm thinking, now that, that's, that's the question, but in interpreting it, it means probably there's been a swelling in the underarm and then the person now goes to for a mammogram. So what would you advise? I would say, wait until your underarm you know, heals before going for a mammogram. So that does not distort the results of the mammogram. Or what do you think? So, so this person has Thank gone you. for a, COVID, a, a vaccination. Let's put the person has gone for a COVID vaccine, right? And there's a swelling in the other underarm. And they are saying, will this affect the result of a mammogram? Thank you so much for that question. It's a very important one. So what we do now, because it has been established that the vaccine in some people actually do cause swellings in the under armpit. So when there are um, swellings in the under armpit, remember, one of the things I told you to look out for when you're checking your breast would be the swellings, right? So already the swellings could mimic something being wrong in the breast, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do now is that the doctors ask us to find out, we find out from you when you had your last vaccine. Mm. So you tell us the date you had your last vaccine and on which arm did you have the vaccine? Mm. Okay. Because the swelling usually happens on the arm where you had the vaccine mm -hmm. that the particular underarm so if you had the vaccine on the left you may have swelling in your left armpit okay mm. so if you had a vaccine in less than four to six weeks then the doctor will likely know that this swelling could be due to the vaccine you have okay okay and if he thinks that it could be due to the vaccine that you had, then he will ask you to go if it continues. So when I'm saying this, I'm talking about when that lady now, maybe you are recalled. And many times we don't recall if that vaccine was given very recently. We already know 
it is established. It's 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 in the data. It's in research. It has been established that that happens with this particular COVID vaccine. So if we find that there it is swollen, we know it is at more attributed to your vaccine. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And I have just one more question. Um, you know, we were talking about um, the being comfortable at, um, at the mammograms. And there's a question that says, is it okay to ask them not to make it so tight? Do you understand? So, <laughs> so is, it, or is it okay to ask you know, for them not to make it so tight? Yeah, that's the question. So it's a very good question because personally, I try to talk to my colleagues and um, I'm known for talking with my women um, while I do their mammograms. Why I do that is because it tends to help them to relax. Believe it or not, having a mammogram can be embarrassing. Mm. So you are standing in front of a total stranger. Again, like pain. Different people react to it differently. Mm. There are people who don't give a hood taking off their top in front of whoever. Mm. Okay? They are not worried about it. Their mind is in what you are going to do. But there are some other people who feel more shy and it could, it could be truly a bit embarrassing. Uh, I, I cannot deny that, coming for a mammogram. So if you come in and you try to, like I said to you, take a deep breath, relax. When you relax, no mammographer would take the tightening higher than it should be. It is in our practice that we should not make the compression it is called to be mm. tighter than is required. So when we compress, but we always say this to the women, and I want to say it today, know that it is your right that any day you come in for a mammogram examination and you are not comfortable with the mammographer, with what she's doing, how she's doing it, have been um, COVID compliant, please speak up. You could say, tell her, please, I am not comfortable or I'm not happy with what you are doing. It is your right. Okay? So if you think it is too tight, yes, you have the right to tell her, no, I think it's too tight. Every professional mammographer, not just me, there are millions that are better than myself. Every mammographer understands how and when to stop. Okay? But like I said, if you think you can't take it no more, we always usually say to the women, let me know at any point if you wish for me to stop. Okay. And I will stop. So please, know in today that it is your right mm -hmm. that when you go in for a mammogram, if you don't want something to happen, please say so. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, it is your right. You can ask, you know, um, for it not to be too tight. Mm -hmm. and even, even before it gets started, you can say, mm -hmm. oh, please, can it not be too tight? Maybe in previous times when I've been here, it's been so tight um, mm -hmm. so that they, they get the message right from the beginning that, okay, don't make it um, tight. Yes, um, or oh, that your breasts are tender. There are some yes, times that, yes. that your breasts, maybe because of the time in your period mm. or anything, we are women, hormones are always acting up. So if there is any reason why a particular breast is more tender than the other one, mm. feel free to share it with a mammographer to say, my left breast feels a bit more tender. Please, could you be more gentle? Mm. We are all humans, okay? Mm. And I can assure you that mammographers professionally are very gentle people. We try to be gentle. We 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 also have breasts. So we you can imagine, <laughs> even if you've not had a mammogram, you can imagine what it will feel like having your breast placed there. So we do our best to make sure that your mammogram or your breast screening um, exercise is a not fun 
I won't say fun uh, one or like a walk in the park or taking ice cream or drinking. No, I will not say that. But it it's possible for you to have a a stressless mammogram mm -hmm. with minimum discomfort. Mm -hmm. So do well to communicate your feelings. The compression or the tightening must get to a particular point for it to be to give a good image. And mm -hmm. every mammographer wants to get the compression to that point mm -hmm. before she takes her pictures. So mm -hmm. if she gets to that point, if you do not allow her to get to that point, she could explain to you that, I'm sorry, but I must get to this particular point for me to be able to take this mammogram. In fact, the machines, the new equipment that are coming up now, will not allow you to do an exposure if that compression does not happen to that point. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So so be aware that nobody would want to punish you. She didn't mm -hmm. know you before. You are not you are not her enemy. She doesn't want to, you know, you know, kill you off with the compression. So but when she's coming, like Sister Iowa said. Free information. My left breast is a bit tender. Can you please be more gentle with that one? That already sends a signal. Let's assume that the mammographer made his style, whatever. She will be more aware to come down gently with the compression. Thank you. Thank you. Because um, what, what you're saying now is that um, the reason for the tightness in the first place is because it has to get to a, a you know, to, to a sort of exact you know um fit for them to be able to take that the image and get it right in the first place uh, okay so that people understand why you know it's tight oh, in the first place. Let, let me, sorry sorry sister well, i'm sorry to interrupt you but it's very good this is an opportunity for everyone to learn and uh, that is why you have called us we thank you for this beautiful opportunity <laughs> honestly god bless you I, I I I do not I have never hesitated to use any opportunity I have to explain the nitty gritty in mammography to everyone in a way that it can help you and encourage you to come for your mammograms. Okay, so the main reason why we do the compression, why we do the tightening, two reasons. One. We want you to be as motionless as possible. Not your whole body, but your breast. But you know what happens? When you're also moving this other body, you see your breast is also moving involuntarily, right? Your breast will move when you're moving only your hand, right? So we try to tell you to keep still. And in many times, we also ask you to hold your breast mm. just for a minute to take the picture. These are the reasons. One. We want you to not to move because when you move, even when you're taking a picture with your phone, you find out that you tell the person, okay, wait, wait, I'm about to take it. So the person can stay quiet, right? Mm. So is it that same thing that happens when the person moves and you are taking the picture? Mm. The picture, when you look at it, you'll be like, oh my God, you moved. Okay? That's mm. exactly what happens when you're taking a mammogram and there is a motion, there is a movement. That movement will make the breast tissue not to, to be blurred. So it is not sharp again, sharp enough. Remember that we are looking for, like Sister Ewa rightly said, I think we are going to bring her into the profession. <laughs> uh, in mammography, what we are looking for in breast screening are those breast lesions that cannot be seen and cannot be felt. So they are very tiny. Some of them are even precancerous. So, like this year, yes, we say pre-cancerous. They, they are not even cancers yet, but the little calcifications could end up becoming cancer. So, those are the kind of things we find out in mammography. So, if you move when the mammogram is being done, those tiny, when we are saying tiny, they are very tiny specks. The next time we'll have this program, I'll make sure I bring some pictures. I would have loved to share with you. Oh my God, I actually have some pictures, but it might it may take some time. I would have loved to share with you some pictures of what a mammogram is and what we are really looking for in a mammogram. So that you can see the tiny specks. 
So your movie is going to make the, the radiologist who is going to be reading it or the film reader not to see it and therefore could meet a cancer. And you don't want that, right? So mm -hmm. one of the reasons is to keep you still so that we can take pictures that will be sharp. Okay? And another reason is to reduce the, the amount of radiation that will be passing through your skin. This is physics. Sorry. It's physics, but it's also important that I bring it in. It could help someone. The amount of x-rays that you are even afraid of in the first instance and saying, you don't want to go for a mammogram because of, because of x-rays. When we, The more we compress your breast tissue, the less amount of x-rays mm. that your body will take. Mm. So it reduces the amount of x-rays that's going to be absorbed by your body. Mm. We call them the scatter, scatter rays, scatter. So those scatter that ordinarily would enter into your, your body, they'll float in your skin and other parts of your breast. Mm. When you are well compressed to a good level, a good um, force, it's actually measured in force. When it's when, when it's uh, compressed to that good force, what happens is that the scatter, that scatter that would have been the one that would be absorbed and would have increased the radiation dose of your skin, will be reduced. Mm. So you are standing to gain more when you allow adequate compression. Mark my words, adequate compression. Adequate. Compression. Adequate compression. Wow. That's really, really enlightening. Enlightening. I mean, okay. the knowledge is so, so powerful. I mean, powerful in the sense that when you have information and the right information, it's um it's good. You know why they are doing what they are doing. And then it even takes away the pressure. And you're even saying, please press it, press it more. <laughs> just let me get out of here oh so so good that's i'm really glad you know that you brought um that that insight thank you so much thank you uh for the person that asked that question um like i said we have a few people who have just joined us please bear with us it's really important that we we take all of these questions and just I'm clear happy. I'm you know, happy. any of your any of any sort of you know bring clarity to this issue really um, is it possible for breast cancer to develop in in between, you know, mammograms? So you've come for mammogram, you know, and they say the next one is in three years. Is it possible for breast cancer to come in between those mammograms? Well, that's a very, very good question. Um, I'll tell you a short story. So I had I had someone coming for a mammogram, and you know, in my usual way. I talked her through it. I love to explain the procedure before I start. That, again, is your right. So when you come for mammograms, you have the right to ask the mammographer to tell you what she is about to do. Mm. We do that professionally, but just in case it doesn't happen, please feel free to ask. Ask her, what are you about to do? Okay, she will explain to you. So, when I was explaining to one of my ladies um, what we're about to do, and like I told you, trying to get her that relaxed way because I noticed that she is one of those ones who are who feel a bit embarrassed taking off undressing in front of a stranger, a total stranger. So, remember when you are ill <clears throat> and you go to the hospital, honestly. Okay, those of us who have had babies, you know what happens when you go to have a baby, eh? And is, you're already in labor. Labor is not small labor. The labor has, has cooked very well. <laughs> when you're in that kind of cooked labor, you do not care who the doctor is, whether he's a man or a woman, or even an animal. You don't know anything. All you need at that point is to have what? your baby so that those pains can stop mm. in the same way when you are ill and you go to the hospital you many times you are sick you are feeling pain somewhere god forbid you are you have felt something in that breast 
you felt something or you pressed your nipple and blood was oozing out. When you're going to the hospital, you are not, when you get there, what you are saying is, come, come, come and check me. Is it my turn yet? And when you enter there, you quickly pull off your bra. You don't even know where you kept it. It's not your business. No, it's a entirely a different scenario when it is for breast screening. Breast screening is for women who are well. So you can use your own self as an example to check. I am fine. Nothing is wrong with me. So I understand some people who say, I don't want to go. Ah, nothing is wrong with me. That is why we want to thank someone like Sister Iowa for a beautiful opportunity like this to tell you, although nothing is wrong with you, come and check your breast. You could find something that you did not know is wrong with you. Okay? So, this lady came in and we were talking and uh, she was one of those ones that feel very embarrassed when you're having a mammogram. And eventually, thank God. It's not my power. Thank God. Uh, apologies to anyone who is, I'm not trying to be too religious, who is not a Christian or um, yeah, anything like that. But truly, I am a Christian, okay? So I believe in God. So thank I thank God for the enablement to carry out my duties wholeheartedly. So while I was doing it, this woman said to me, oh my God, oh, thank you so much. I never knew I could have a mammogram that could be this stressless. I did not feel embarrassed. I used to feel very shy. Now I am happy. So mammograms are not even, this is not even painful. I had a nice time. You are so friendly, you know? She was saying, and I said, oh, I'm happy to hear this. And she said to me, you see, you have made me now. I'm going to be coming for my mammograms. I have not been attending. So she has not been attending for her mammograms. And she came that day. She just said, let me give them one more try. Because she said the first time she went, something happened. And now she's pissed off. Okay? She doesn't want to go again. You know, maybe the mammographer did not treat me well or I didn't like the way she spoke to me or whatever is your reason. I'm also using this opportunity to apologize on behalf of that mammographer who I do not know. Or any other person, maybe the clerk or the receptionist or whoever that may have made you to feel uh, you don't want to go again. Please, I apologize. But for the sake of your life, please do well to attend. You will not meet the same person again. The next time you go, believe me, you will meet a better person. And remember, we are also training. Ongoing, ongoing trainings are also happening for professionals. So even if someone was not so good, I'm not the same mammographer as I was last year. I've gone through some fire and water and brimstone. And so I am a lot better this year. I've gone through lots of trainings and lots of things that have made me a better mammographer. So even that person you met last year, if you even meet her again this year, believe me, she will be a better mammographer to you. Assuming she wasn't a good one. I do not want to believe that. Okay? So um, this particular lady was so happy. And then in the course of trying to dress up, she said to me, do you know what I said? No, she said, because I also, when I'm doing the mammograms, I do my breast cancer advocacy screening, breast screen, advocacy. So I try to tell you, have you been coming? Please could come in. You are going to save your life. Early detection is key. And as, as I was just saying those words, the woman said to me, oh, thank you so much. The words you said to me, they will rest with me. And I will always remember them. And I will tell my friends, I will tell my sisters, everybody should go for their mammograms. I met someone today who has told me how important it is to have a mammogram. And then she said to me, do you know what happened to my friend? And I said, no. She said, my friend is going for mastectomy next, next week. I said, wow, wow. So sorry to hear that. But fingers crossed, her life will still be safe. Your identity does not lie with your breasts. Without your breasts, you are still beautiful. These are some of the things that we do when we do our support for breast cancer survivors. So she said to me, yes, that do I know what happened? I said, no, she said, the lady went for a mammogram last year. She supposed she's due, she's going to be due for mammogram 
in two years time right that is the three years mm. and in between after one year she was taking her bath and decided to do her self-breast examination that we just talked about and while she was taking her bath she just did her and immediately she felt something and when she felt it like i'm saying to you again today do your breast self-examination and when you find something immediately quickly report to your gp she reported to her gp immediately within very short period of time with the help of the wonderful work that nhs is doing in england um i really really respect the nhs she was seen she was booked for biopsy was done it was confirmed and she's already booked for her mastectomy and this lady was telling me she was how grateful she is for people like us who will teach people that even though you have had your mammogram please don't relax continue to check your breast what point am i making what is that why is asking is a practical thing it just happened i'm telling you something that just happened someone had just who had already had this same breast screening we are adv uh, advocating for she had it no ma so what if she had had that uh, mammogram uh, last year and relaxed and said insurance has covered me there is no problem i am okay uh, let me go I i'm waiting for another three years before that three years she would have been a dead woman because when this breast cancer was found out remember there are different types of breast cancer maybe we'll have another um, um lecture some other day, talk some other day where we can discuss uh, in depth things like types of breast cancer why some happen to some people um differently according to statistics everything that we are doing is from research okay so breast cancer you could have the type that will be found only today and in the next two months it has progressed so rapidly depending on the type of breast cancer and this is why we say don't play with your life the moment you say that thing go and speak with the doctor immediately if you say it's because of my work i need to be at work i can't take that day off if you die one minute silence they will give to you and they will buy you one card from tesco one pound and write it to your family that's your job will be quickly re be replaced with 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 without they won't think about it so do not take your job to replace your life you have to be alive to do your job if it is family you'll be alive to take care of your family so like sister was said in this year 2022 be more self-conscious okay i can't I, I would love to do an exercise with us i was telling sister what the other day the exercise is this put up your pen or in your head write for yourself as many as are watching me it's unfortunate i can't see the people that are watching me but the, as many people as, as can hear me now or would watch later think in your head or use a pen and paper write for me 10 most important things to you that you want to do use your head now in your mind in your mind think about 10 things that are most important that god if you do this thing okay you know all of us the christians most of us are doing our 21 day fast now almost every church i know is going on 21 day fast so if you are fasting then this is your prayer point you have written if you're a christian pardon me please if you are not one but if you are a Christian, you have written your prayer point. Please, can you go back to that prayer point? There is something you will notice. Most women, the 10 things I've asked you now to write that are most important to you, go back in your mind now, you find out that you were not in any of them. Somehow, somehow, you had number one, mortgage. Number two, your children's school, their uni. Number three, your husband, number four, your mom, number five. Somehow, every other thing is more important than yourself. So in this year, 2022, I'm encouraging you to, it's the other way around. 
it is when you are well and healthy mm -hmm. that you can do every other thing. Okay? So please, even if you have had your breast screening examination two days ago, still continue to check your breast. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Uzo, women are changing now. Ah, women are changing now. They are looking after themselves. Mm, there's, a, there's, a, there's a new generation of women who are looking after themselves. And like you said, um, what, you know, you can only do all the things that you want to do for other people if you are well looked after. Do you understand? They can only get your, your all those other people can only get what you are getting. So if you want to do more of that, then you've got to look after yourself. Final question uh, before I ask you to share with us the work that you're doing is um, can a woman who is breastfeeding um, have a mammogram? Okay, so we advise that breastfeeding mothers do not have mammograms. Mm. This is the advice. This is the general advice. As a matter of fact, when you are breastfeeding, we don't even invite you. Remember, here in England, we invite from 50. So there is little chance that you'll be breastfeeding at 50. Mm, yes. Okay. Yes. So there's also, almost little or no mm, chance that you are breastfeeding at 50. Mm, but in cases of uh, coming in for, there are exceptional cases, just like most things in life. There are exceptional cases where, for example, a woman has come into the clinic with a complaint. So she has a symptom. So she has felt she's breastfeeding, but she has felt a lump. Okay? So most times, what I have noticed, I could be, I stand to be corrected. What I have noticed is the doctors usually do a breast ultrasound for that breastfeeding woman. Okay, but that does not mean that she cannot have a mammogram. Okay. If they think it is necessary, remember very importantly, mammograms can only be justified when the benefits outweigh the risk. Okay. So mammography is all about benefits and risk. So we say you do not undergo any mammogram if the risk outweighs the benefits. You won't do it. Mm -hmm. So if they think in that situation, like I had said, women who are 30, 40 and below don't do mammogram. But there have been cases where there is a great benefit that will come from asking the woman to do a mammogram. And she will be asked to do it by doctors. Okay? Yeah. So it's all about a balance between Weighing the situation, yeah, risk and benefits, yeah, yeah, which and this can only be determined by your doctors, yeah. Wow, that's really, really good. Thank you, thank you. So, um, depending on the situation, a, a, mom, a, a, a breastfeeding woman can have a mammogram. Wow, thank you so much. Wow, how time has flown. Wow, it's really been a, a fantastic time. Thank you for all that you have shared, Uzo, for the information, the knowledge. Somebody said applied knowledge is power. And I'm really hoping that, um, you know, everyone on, on this platform, you would apply, you know, the information, the, the knowledge that you have had today. Uzo, it's been amazing having you on board. You've shared so much, so much information. And um, somebody says it is priceless. Yes, it is really, really priceless. I believe that it's given us insight. It's given us wisdom as we go through this year and we get our invite or we know anyone who needs to go. Let's encourage them. Let's share the information. We can share the broadcast. We can share, um, you know, the link. Thank you so much. And just before we go, Uzo, I'd like to ask just to tell us what you do. So you're the founder of Kind Heart. Um, charity um just share with us a few of the things that you do i know you're a mammographer and that's why you're but, but share with us some of the um charitable work you've been doing with um, breast cancer 
Oh, on Thank you so much for this beautiful opportunity. Um, so I would like to start with this very um, short story uh, of my why. The why for my foundation, for the charity. Um, I've lost quite a number of women, very close females to breast cancer. And the last one that, I would say the last stroke that broke the camel's back was my cousin who was only 40. Mm. And uh, she died. And, you know, the pain to me is not just that she died from breast cancer, but that I didn't know about it. Nobody knew that she had breast cancer because of the same thing I talked about, the shame, the stigma, back home in Africa, um, people still associate breast cancer to, to stigma. So people are ashamed to talk about the breast. They are ashamed to talk about what's going on with the breast. And um, I also use the opportunity to appeal to our husbands and our, our partners, you know, to help us, you know, there are women whose breast cancer were found by their partners. There have been cases like that. Okay? So they too can be on the lookout for it as well as us. So this lady died, my cousin, and she left two little children, one four-year-old and the other one two. And that shattered me. Okay? Like I said, I've, I've lost quite a number of people to breast cancer, but that one was, it was too bad. And I said to myself, maybe if only she had reached out to me and told me that I have, something is going on in their breast, if I had made myself available to her, because, you know, unless you make yourself available to someone, they may not know how to approach you. Okay? So I, I really felt bad that if I had used the position that I have in as a radiographer, as a mammographer, to reach out to tell at least the people around me what breast cancer is, what they can do to help themselves, in case they find something where they can reach out for help, or they can contact me, maybe she would not have died. So that pain was the main thing that pushed me and I had to come on social media, organizing webinars, doing outreaches, campaigns in Nigeria, in Uganda, in Zambia, by social media. I've not visited these countries physically, but using my webinar platforms, I've been able to meet people in other parts of Africa as well. So that, that gave birth to Pine Heart Charity Month. And since then, I have, Kind Heart was founded in 2019. And since then, I have been doing this breast cancer awareness. I've been supporting women who are survivors. Um, now, I have a platform where women who are survivors can meet. It is still under, well under construction, but it's going on well. Women who are survivors need to share prayers, to support one another. And uh, yes, it has been quite a journey. I wouldn't say it has been a uh, straight and seamless, but it has been very interesting and impactful and i found so much satisfaction in helping to see the life of someone else kind of charity foundation is very much involved in supporting breast cancer survivors sharing breast cancer information updates with women on all our social platforms social media platforms and our websites so whatever information that I get and that we get as Kind Heart Foundation, we share this information 
to women. And we also use that platform to take questions, allay the fears of women, and help them through their journey when they are diagnosed, if and when they are diagnosed of breast cancer. Also, Kind Hearts Foundation also deals with underprivileged children. More than before, we can see that one of the reasons why back home in Africa, most women, I will blow your mind with one short story. So a lady went for a mammogram in one of the hospitals in Nigeria. She had the mammogram and she felt something, okay? In her case, it's symptomatic because in Africa, most African countries, we don't have breast screening exercise. So she had found something using her self-breast breast self examination. And she went to the hospital for the doctor to see her. The doctor asked her for a mammogram. She had a mammogram. And the mammogram did say, confirm that she has breast cancer. Now, this woman was told by the mammographer that this is your result. Please come back in one week or two weeks for your biopsy and then we can plan, you know how it's planned, the treatment can be well planned and everything. And the woman said, okay, thank you very much. What is the diagnosis? They told her, you have breast cancer. Um, I think, uh, I, may not, I may not be right. I, I think it's after the biopsy, of course, when the result is sure, she was told she has breast cancer. Now she needs to come back for the treatment. Yes, that's the correct thing. She needs to come back for treatment. This particular woman left, and this my colleague told me that the next day she saw this woman was in the market in Nigeria, where she was selling yam. Way after the number of weeks she was asked to come back. And the lady asked her, I you not this woman I saw the other day you that came to the clinic. She said, Yes, I am. She said, What are you doing here? She said, Ah, I'm selling yam. How will I feed my children? If I don't come to this to this market today, how will my children eat? Now, you living in United Kingdom, you, it may be difficult for you to understand the impact of having just food, your basic food, to eat back home in Africa. And this woman, eventually, long story cut short, by the time she finally came to the hospital, it was too bad, and we all know what the verdict became. Of course, she died. Now, these are some of the things that bring so much pain to my body. I feel so much pain when such things happen. And my charity tries as much as possible to reach out to some of these underprivileged children, some who have lost their parents to one kind of illness or disease or the other, who can't feed, and we are able to help them to feed and to send them back to school. Thankfully, in most of the countries, you may not have the school fees paid in public school, but you still need to buy the books and buy the uniforms and get the children sent to go to school. So Charity, Kenta Charity Foundation helps many other privileged children to do that. To send one child in Nigeria back to school to buy her, his uniform, to buy his books, to buy his pencils, is less than three pounds mm. for one child. And so we have had very generous, I'm using this opportunity to thank every sponsor of Kind Heart Charity Foundation. We've had generous sponsors who have come in to say, I'm happy to send back three children back to school. Any little thing that they donate makes a big difference in the lives of these children. So I have I have one who a man a man who had she had he had because he's dead now. He had five children and he in Nigeria, I don't know if you know what it means to push barrel. So some of us may not know what it means, but he pushes barrel in the market. So it's like he helps people to carry their loads from one point to another the man, the head of the house, the father. And on this particular day, he had headache. And he said he was having headache. And he didn't know he had blood pressure. 
the headache became so much he looked for who to get 500 naira from 500 naira in united kingdom is about would i say 80p about that so it will be about 80p that he was looking for to get himself treated and he couldn't find it mm. anyway he went to the market on that same day and he laid down the story his wife told me what he laid down on his wheelbarrow to rest because of the headache and he stayed there lying down quietly and the market closed when they were clearing off from the market they came and called him stand up now the market has closed we want to close down the market and they found him dead he was dead on wow. that wheelbarrow he died and so that that kind of that case left his wife and his five children helpless he had even a little baby who was about three months when he died and the poverty in the home was so much kind heart i'm just giving examples of the kind of the things we have been able to do, to do. So kind heart yes kind heart took up the family we've been uh, sponsoring the family helping the children we sent the children back to school because obviously they all dropped out from school the mm. eldest child had to take back that same barrel to the market so that she he can help and he's only 13 so that he can help to his siblings thank so you so much yes thank we have been able to um yeah. to help such people so these are the kind of things that we do yeah. in kindness also like Sister Iowa said, uh, last time we also were able to send some women to do breast mammography back home in Nigeria, and we sponsored them, we paid them. We found out cancers truly in some of the women. And today we are happy to say that the lives of those women have been saved. And we think that what we are doing is working, putting God first in everything that we do. Thank you so much. Thank you for your kind heartedness <laughs> and well done on the work that you're doing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's really, really saving lives. And thank you so much for coming on the platform today. Um, I have put out your social media um, handle so that anyone who wants to contact you can contact you. And um, if you're listening and you want um, to support in any way or you have further inquiries, there's also an email that you can reach us on and um, we would pass your message to um, Uzo and to Kind Heart Foundation. And I want to say thank you so much, everyone. I believe that it's been time what, um, you know, what it's been what your while, you know, joining this platform today. Thank you for your engagement. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for coming on board. And please, um, you can also share the link. Somebody, there might be somebody out there who also needs to listen, who also needs to hear this. And I want to say thank you so much. So it's um, any final word from you, Uzo? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so, so much. I want to say a big thank you for this um, rare privilege. And um, thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here today. Um, I want to find out word. I want to say to the every woman out there, please be breast aware. Keep be breast aware. Make sure that you check your breast. Make sure that you go for your appointments. Hmm. Remember. Remember, remember, early detection is key. So early detection saves lives. Come for your mammogram appointment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for me as well is be breast aware. Go for your screenings. Go for your mammograms. Look after yourself look after yourself it is from whatever you do for yourself that you can give out to people and so from moment of hope it is um thank you so much everyone and hope to see you next time when we come um on this talk show and our, our talk show will be next in march so it's every other month and so i look forward to seeing you everyone then god bless you and please on the email if there are topics 
issues related to what we do that you want us to bring on this platform, please send us a, 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 um, an email or just put it in the comment box. We'll pick it up from the issues or topics that you want us to, to have discussions about. We're, we're ready to listen. We're, we're ready to take them on. Just put them in the chat box and we will do so. So it's a goodbye. God bless you. And from um, Uzo as well. Thank you. God bless you. Bye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.